do a quick video just explaining a few books. Sorry, it's shaking. I'm moving my books around. Um, so, this is the New Testament Greek for Beginners by J. Gresham Macon, is I think how you say his name. Let me find the cover here. Yeah, J. Gresham Macon. And this is actually going to give you um, beginner's Greek, right? So, the main focus of this book is actually teach a person how to read Greek but it actually is going to teach you a little bit about um, some of the rules of grammar as well. So um, this is some pretty <laughs> tough stuff. Um, and along with this, like the analytical lexicon to the Greek New Testament. And it is um, by William D. Mounts. And this also gives you, this is more in depth on the side of just the, um, the grammar itself, unlike this one, which is to teach you Greek. So, that right there and this right here are actually some beginner, this is beginner's Greek, but this right here, this is like rocket science. This thing right here is hard to understand. I, um, I read these and, I, um, like I said, it's like trying to unravel some kind of a jigsaw puzzle because I didn't pay attention in high school English. So. Um, Noun, pronouns, um, adjectives, and verbs, and pronouns, and um, all of that, you know, is, um, those are a little bit easier to swallow than, like, if you're talking about, um, you know, something that's, like, active voice, or um, past tense, or, our past tense is easy to understand, right? Um, and it's, like, I think in the Greek, they call it the aorist, and, um, like, so, the, um, the parts that, you know, it, like definite articles, indefinite articles, that might be easy to understand, but, um, and I, I think right there I'm mixing the English rules and the Greek rules because um, that's, that's why I'm giving you these particular resources because if you're interested in learning that, this, this is what you would want to read. I've spent some time reading. But I have a lot of the um, basics to learn before I can really go very in depth in these things with you. But um, even in the Hebrew Keyword Study Bible, it does have a section that helps explain grammar. And so it will literally go through and it'll have next to particular words in there the way you can identify it. But um, unless you understand a little bit more about the rules of English than I do, um, this doesn't really serve um, right now because I'm learning a lot still. I learn it about English, so I try to learn some of this, but I'm, I'm not really in a position to really um, teach very well on it. Like I can read out of these books and tell you what the purposes of the books are, and, and you can decide of whether you might want one of these books. Um, this one right here, this one is just really good. This is the, the Bible itself, and it's got the um, Hebrew and Greek concordance in it. And it's also got the, the grammatical codes in there. So I just wanted to share this with you to kind of give you a bit of a, um, some helps with um, learning the grammar. Because um, once you've learned definitions, it's also important sometimes to know exactly um, what's going on in the sentence itself and um, that's and I think we do that naturally when we read that it's um, for example when it says Jesus wept you know in that whole scenario it doesn't mean Lazarus wept who was in the tomb and it doesn't say the disciples necessarily were weeping it says Jesus wept right so it's identified the subject of the sentence and Jesus would be a noun right and um, that and he wept so the wept would be the the verb so a lot of that's natural you know we understand a lot of the the rules of grammar without actually having to apply the names but um, learning some of the little intricacies of that I believe would be very helpful for example I like the word um, to be conformed there in Romans 8 and um, 30 I believe it is for whom he did for no for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of the Son. Because if you're being conformed, it doesn't mean you're conforming yourself. It's, it's God acting on you as a, through an outer source conforming you. And also, for example, baptism. 
Baptism doesn't mean you go out to a lake and you hold your nose and you go down underwater. Um, the Bible explains to us that God does the baptizing because it's Him who did the propitiation for our sins and the expiation for our sins so we could receive that for forgiveness for the ones who He called and um, glorified and justified there in Romans chapter 8, verse um, 30, I believe. So, um, it helps to know this, you know, it helps to know that God is the one doing the baptizing and God is the one who um, is doing the conforming and the shaping and the things that are happening in our lives. So, sometimes when we just read things and we don't have a little bit of background, not only grammar background, maybe definition ba background, and also just a little bit of experience with studying the scriptures, it can be complicated to have any idea what any of it's talking about other than what you think that it means and what you have to do is learn what the Bible's talking about so you begin to conform to what God actually meant for you to conform to and you'll, um, as a believer, I believe a lot of that will begin to happen naturally but um, learning the scriptures, learning a little bit of definitions and learning some grammar will assist you in understanding some of the deeper intricacies that run through the scriptures. So, all right. <laughs> I hope this helps, and thanks for watching. Bye.